Let's go ahead and make this frog together, step by step. The first thing that we're going to add is two big eyes, right here towards the top of my page. Make a big circle, two big circles, and add in the black. If you want to, I'm going to do two circles here, if you want to leave a little bit of white in there, I know a lot of artists like to do that, to show the shininess of the eye. Big circle, little circle, there we go. We have two now eyes. Now we're going to make a curve line that goes from one eye to the other. This is going to become the body of my frog. Your body might be longer or shorter or wider than mine. And then if there's any space in between the eyes, just draw a little line there as well. Now we need to think, what is my mouth going to be like? Maybe your mouth is just a little curve, like this. Or maybe this curve has a tongue sticking out. Or maybe it's an open mouth. You can make your mouth however you would like. Now we're going to add four legs, but the back legs are the hopping legs, so they have a little bit more power. So they look like this, up and down, up and down, just like that. Then the front legs, they hold the frog up. So they are going to kind of look like the letter V, letter V. Okay, now we're going to add the feet. We're going to use a simple shape called a triangle. There's one foot. Here's another one. We need to add a triangle. Two lines and one at the bottom. Two lines, one at the bottom, and then over here as well. Now we have our feet on our frog we're going to give him some frog toes. On each triangle, draw three circles. All right, that is adorable. You could leave your frog like this, but I'm going to give it an environment. So my frog is sitting on a lily pad. So I'm going to go ahead from one leg, come around all of the toes, and come back up to the other leg. If you want to give some texture to your lily pad, you could draw some lines make it look like it has little veins in it. You could draw a triangle. That's what I did right here. I drew this triangle. Sometimes lily pads have that. All right, now we have a frog sitting on a lily pad. Down here is the water and up here is the sky. So we need to separate our picture a little bit. We will add a horizon line. Here's a line. We skip over when we run into something. We skip over to the other side and finish it up. You can leave your frog just like this, but if you want to give a little extra detail, I'm going to put a couple of flies in my environment because frogs love to eat flies. So a fly is just going to look like this. A little circle with two little wings. Maybe I can do two. A little circle with two little wings. Oh, those are so fun, I'm gonna do one more. A little circle with two little wings. Then I can draw some dotted lines showing the path of where it's flying. Dot, 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 dot. Ooh, I love it. Maybe this one comes from over here. Dot, 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 dot. And this one, hmm, yeah, from the bottom, right here. 
da, 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 da. Okay, now if you are using pencil, you're going to switch to a Sharpie marker so you have nice bold lines just like I do. Now we're going to use crayons to color everything except the frog. We're going to color the water, the lily pad, and the sky. Here we go. All right, my frog is completed. Well, everything except for the frog is completed with my crayons. Notice I used a messy mat or a scrap piece of paper underneath to keep my surface clean. That was very helpful as I was coloring. In order to color our frog, we need to talk about the color wheel. We are going to choose two colors that live next to each other on the color wheel. So if I choose green for my frog, I can choose blue, or yellow to go with it. If I choose orange, I can choose red or yellow to go with it. I think what I want to choose is pink, but there's no pink on the color wheel. Well, pink is very close to red. Red goes up here, and if I add white to red, uh, it makes pink. So pink is kind of like red in this case. So if I choose pink, I can choose one of its neighbors, purple or orange. I think I'm going to choose pink and orange for my frog. Now it's time to color inside the frog. We're using our markers for this and I'm gonna choose the lightest color between the two. And that's actually pretty close. So I think I'm gonna go this with this orange first. It's maybe a little bit lighter than the pink. And I'm going to make polka dots inside my frog. So I'm just going to draw little circles in the whole frog body, on the frog feet and frog toes, and on the eyes. Would I put orange in the eyes? No, I think I'm gonna to try to leave the eyes white. So I'm going to do the whole body, the legs, the feet, the toes with my polka dots. Look at all the polka dots I added. I really filled up my frog with polka dots. Now I need a brush and some water. And what I'll be doing is brushing on top of my marker. What this does is it turns my marker into paint, watercolor paint. In order to make this work, I do need to have a high quality paper. So I do have watercolor paper and I need some water, but not too much. So you see me wiping off my brush nice and gentle on the side of my, my glass jar and I'm kind of walking my brush through, not going in big movements. I, my brush is slowly walking through the path, picking up some of this paint or markers as it goes. Notice I'm trying to stay out of where the eyes are. If I accidentally get some marker in the eyes, no big deal, but I am intentionally trying to stay out of that. And I'm also trying to cover up all of the white that I have on the frog. So this white is going to disappear and it's going to be this really cool effect of my two marker colors turned into paint. And there we go, we have our finished product we used crayons for the background, markers turned into paints for the frog itself, and left a little tiny bit of white behind with the eyes.